And oil prices have been relatively contained despite the fundamental event. Hello everyone, Monty here, market analyst at IG with another technical cheat sheet video where we take a look at key technical indicators in order to formulate a technical overview. That way we can mentally prep those strategies for when the overview holds. And if like me, you like to have a plan B, but whenever it fails, both daily and weekly timeframe, while looking at those levels, which you can then reincorporate uh, depending on the day of the week. We're also going to take a look at where traders stand, which both on the same side when it comes to the energy commodity, though one of them not far off shifting to majority short, as well as fundamental considerations, which for this one, for WTI, we're actually going to start with that. I'm not talking about the weekly inventory and recount uh, readings that you get, uh, you know, whether that's API, EIA, or, or Baker Hughes. I'm not talking about the monthly oil report uh, releases, which are going to be next week out of OPEC, IA, and EIA. I'm not talking about the geopolitical risk premium, which at times was pretty high and did throw a wrench into the daily time frame. I'll talk about that one later. I'm not even talking about the strength that we've seen in the physical market. A lot of the bulls usually point to that and go, you know, prompt spreads, crack feds, so on and so forth. Uh, you know, financial markets not truly reflecting the strength that exists uh, and the tightness that might exist in the physical market. I'm um, not even talking about the recent OPEC plus output cut extensions to the end of this quarter. I'm actually talking about what exists between the oil traders about these sort of thin red lines. You always talk, you always see that with, with traders, both large and small, about where oil prices ought to settle. What is the new range, which is going to entice whether the suppliers or the buyers uh, in or out or whatever it is going to cause these key movements. So, you know, about 10 years ago, like, oh, you know, it's around $100, for example. No, wait a minute. We're at a new zone. It's around 50. No, we're taking up to 60. Is it between 70 and 80? Is it between 80 and 90? Is it between 70 and 90, so on and so forth. It's that sort of thing, that sort of mentality that exists amongst traders. That's why I brought this one up first before we actually take a look at the technicals. With that in mind, let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start off with the weekly time frame. Uh, this, by the way, pricing is off of uh, IG's trading platform, just in case you're wondering if it's a little bit different from what uh, you're seeing. But price for now, above all, its main uh, short-term weekly moving averages, but yet to cross the last of its main long-term weekly moving averages with a DMI that you know, you got a plus DI above the negative DI. We had a positive uh, DMI cross recently, about four four weeks ago recently, and you know, for the weekly time frame. Uh, but yet to really tilt that one to green. You have an ADX that's not in trending territory, nowhere near it, not even rising. An RSI that's uh, uh, you know nowhere near the 30 or 70 uh, oversold or overbought uh, areas, and uh, quite a gap in order to get to the upper end of what has been declining Bollinger Band. So that that's on the weekly time frame. In all, you want to classify this overview as something more cautious consolidation, where on most weeks, it's been relatively controlled, even when shifting to a new zone. Because a lot of times when you shift to a new zone, then you have issues with the levels holding. But when it's in a controlled manner, it means that week on week, you still manage to hold. And that means that a lot of times for the conformance strategies remain usually selling after a reversal or buying after reversal, selling after a reversal on, off the first resistance or buying after a reversal off the first support. Though, in this case, when you say cautious consolidation, it's got added caution. Just to get, you do have those moments where it can go a little bit beyond that. So you don't want to be the pawn getting stopped out first. So if you're, if you're fading the move, you, you're, you know, you're at the peak. If, if you fade the move and it doesn't offer a reversal or a significant reversal, you're at the top and it's going great. If it does, though, then you want to be careful because you don't want it to get to the stop loss or your sell for the contrarian strategy. Those of you contrarians, by the way, it's a buy breakout off the first resistance. It's a sell breakout off the first support. Of course, you want to check if it coincides with key midterm levels as well as those lines that I talked about. As And also, I want to point out that levels have been narrowing a bit again on the weekly time frame because when we had that geopolitical risk, it was, it was rising. Um, and now it's managed to narrow a bit. I'm not saying that you, there isn't a chance for that geopolitical risk room to cause moves again. It's just that for now, it's causing levels to narrow slightly a little bit. And speaking of those levels, the distance between the relative starting point or RSP and the first resistance or first support, $3.11. Now, keep in mind, this is for the week, for the start of week. So they're much larger. And uh, between the first and the SL or stop loss, $1.55, though, again, at your discretion. And that's because you have to look at it in terms of your risk reward. So don't just go for like a reward of like, you know, five cents and go, I'm going to risk $1.55. That's not proper risk management, but you know what I mean in that regard. Or if you're flipping, if you're going for a breakout and you want to flip it in terms of where you're a sell and where, uh, where your stop loss and where your take profit is going to be. What about on the daily time frame? It's always going to be a little bit trickier. And the reason why is because on the daily time frame, it's much, much, much easier to shift those technical boxes. Price though above, as of doing this video, above all its main short and long-term daily moving averages. The DMI, that by one calculation, it would say it's positive. Uh, that we had a positive DMI cross not too long ago, but what happened was is that it was preceded by a number of false crosses, which that kind of masked this one. It finally did occur. It's like, oh, now, it, now it's occurred. And that that has uh, threw a wrench into some of those DMI traders out there. And ADX that is rising, but still not in trending territory just yet. And RSI not too far off overbought and price at the upper end of the Bollinger Band. So how are you going to classify something like this? Looks like there's positive buys, breached a uh, recent midterm uh, resistance level. We are somewhat within a 
shorter term bull channel. And that means that the overview all time is a little bit trickier to classify, but it's between bull average versus consolidation volatile. Consolidation volatile is whenever you've got a very, very wide channel or you've got price sort of averaging back, whether it's up or down, average, going moving back towards an average with these mini trend moves, so to speak. Because you know, if you have a, a mini trend move, you've got you know, a number of sessions where it's going up or it moves up a little bit. Okay, now things are a little bit, you've got some positive technical indicators, and then after it starts to move back down or it sort of average back and all that. Now, depending on where you are within the channel, all three of these technical key te technical indicators can shift. So all three of them can shift to neutral, and one or two of them can even shift to bearish, depending on where you are within this bull channel. So a lot of times it's a bit difficult to just call it a bull average just yet, and you want to at least get past in terms of price indicator proximity, price is close to a lot of those key indicators. You want to offer a little more distance before shifting this one and actually saying this is a bull average overview. But if you think that's the case, I'll get to the strategy in just a moment because for the conformist, uh, it's it's a, it, it, it's a buy breakout off the first resistance and sell breakout off the first support. Somebody out there going, wait a minute, isn't that the opposite of what we saw for the weekly? Yeah, weekly levels are larger. So on the weekly level, it's a little different. Think of it as going for breakouts off the first a resistance for support and going for a reversal off the second resistance or second support on the daily time frame because the levels are much narrower, which I'll get to in just a moment. Um, but those of you who think, and this you can also use for the weekly time frame, that you think that the first levels are going to be for this week or this day as centers of sort of centers of gravity, what you can do is then if it isn't going to offer much beyond the first levels, but you want to trade it up to it, you can initiate a little bit early with further breakouts and move up and take it to the first resistance or, or take it down if you're going for a sell breakout to the first support. That's in, in terms of the conformist. Uh, the other thing I want to point out for conformist, by the way, is that you know today the level might not hold, but if we're seeing a mini trend move, eventually the level isn't going to hold. So it's a matter of conformance breakouts, maybe not outperforming you know, within the day, but maybe over a day or two, you might actually see them outperform against contrarian strategies, which contrarians, by the way, these are, are, are you're going for uh, sell, selling the first res resistance after reversal or buying the first support after a reversal. Now, the thing is that daily levels have, a, have less of a chance of holding against geopolitical risk premium changes you know, or, or any real proper fundamental release. They have less of a chance of holding, right? Uh, weekly, you can because you have a gap of, we talked about $3.11. That's, that's depending on if price is at the RSP and then you have a, a fundamental news or something, it has a much better chance of holding compared to the daily time frame where the gap, where the distance between the RSP and the first is only $1.10. And between the first and the SL or stop loss, 55 cents. Again, the stop loss depends on your risk reward. Okay, so keep that in mind before you, before you uh, put the stop loss in. And again, that's if you're going, you're selling off the first resistance. If you're going for a buy, you just flip it up in terms of where you want your take profit to be and where you want your stop loss to be. So that's when it comes to, to the uh, overview levels, strategies, so on and so forth. Let's take a look at the traders where both of the majority buy. They were majority buy last week, still majority buy at the start of this week. These are week on week changes. But for the COT speculators, taking it up to a heavy buy 73%, IG clients, clients on our end, dropping from a heavy buy 67 to just a slight buy 53%, not going to take much in order for them to shift into majority sale territory. I'm going to go ahead and plot it onto the chart. Uh, blue, blue dotted uh, is going to be the IG clients, green dotted COT speculators as percent long, looking at the left axis. So, you know, if, they're, if, they're at, if the blue dotted is here, it means they're 66% long. The red dotted, by the way, that line is the 50 50. Whenever you see the dotted line above, majority buy, whenever they're below, majority sell. So what exactly is the story over here? I have to say that it's generally been in favor of IG clients. What I mean by that is that, you know, when prices were going down, you do have a, a number of momentum traders that were getting out over here. Price went back up. They started to go long. They, they went into extreme buy territory, the green dotted line, that is. We're looking at COT speculators. Uh, price went up. They were going with it, the early momentum guys. And then all of a sudden, they had this big move back down. And then they started to go back down once more. And now they've been holding around here in heavy buy territory and now starting to take it up again as price starts to average a little bit higher. So what about retail traders? How do they do this? Prices were, when they fell over here, they went into extreme buy territory. Bam, you had this big move. Longs got out, shorts initiated, uh, at times looking to range trade at times, but they went to majority short and then came this move right back down over here. So anticipating it's gonna come back towards an average, which they were right. Uh, it did come back down. They went into majority buy, reaching extreme buy territory. And now, especially when it got to over here, they, they really, I saw a number of buys coming in at the low right over here. Timed that one beautifully, by the way. And a part of it had to do with a bit of range trading over here because a lot of the oil, you know, whenever oil settles, you're getting some, a chance for them to average their way out. And that's kind of what they needed. It's whenever you have a, if you have a significant trend move without a chance to average out, then that's kind of when you have the problem. But here now getting, this is a weekly. So as an average, they were above 53%, but at the start of the week now, they're starting at 53%. Uh, so if we do get significant price increases here on out, if it's going to entice longs into closing out and shorts into initiating, we may actually see a shift back to majority short territory. So that's about it from our end. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Good luck out there.